If, for instance, we have this one, provision of grinding machines, it's very simple mathematics. You could go to the open market, see how much a grinding machine is, yes. if they're supplying that much, so we know the budget. Does oh. that make sense? Yes, uh, we, we, yes, we can know. But on, you know that the contractor that will supply, we do a markup. And so the price that is available at the, the open market is not the price that we should be supplied. Not more than 10%. Ah, okay, it's not more than 10%. But there are certain times that they can tell you the specification of those grinding machines are such that some may be computerized. Well, so can you hear me? The, uh, the matter of the intercession itself, mm -hmm. you, you brought that back. So let me take us back to that point. These are people who are who say they are representing their citizens. And from the budget they looked at, mm -hmm. within the period of six months, yes. they didn't find projects that would affect the people they represent. Yes. So you say they are wrong in ensuring that their people get, and fortunately for them, the president stand off on it. <laughs> so but, if you say they are in the insertion of this project yes. is wrong, so, then you're, are you not also saying that the president has just, how do you say it now, uh, when someone commits murder, is an accomplice <laughs> to an illegality <laughs> for signing fact. on it. Okay, um, Neta, this is the issue. See, the National Assembly, I hope by saying they represent their people, are not, are not inferring or trying to suggest that the president does not represent Nigerians. The president of the Federal Republic and the executive, and particularly the president of the Federal Republic and the vice president, represents a greater number of Nigerians than the National Assembly. That's the truth. Because the whole of the Federation is his constituency. And he has penned down, according to his, his, his detail, according to his constitutional functions, those things. Let me give you just three instances. You will see whether those projects were representative of the people or not. The second uh, Niger Bridge, this National Assembly caught the allocation to it. The Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the most traversed road in Nigeria, they caught allocation to it. Mambila Plateau, a power project, they cut the allocation and use it to provide for boreholes. They cut allocation to Enugu uh, Airport Terminal. So, are, are these not also representative? See. But hold on, hold on. Since you're, you're looking at the project, let's look right. at this. So, construction of cassava rice, soya bean processing mills will mm -hmm. create jobs for the people. Mm -hmm. That's one of the projects they inserted. They ins inserted provision of medical outreach for aged, displaced persons. They inserted that project. Construction and installation of solar street lights to light up the nation. Since the Mambila Plaza and other power projects <laughs> are failing, solar lights would help. Provision of entrepreneurial training for some youth. <laughs> You think all of this will not help? I tell you very frankly. Down yes, to the grassroots. I just take the last one. The last one can be done by any of the federal universities. And there are 40 of them. But are they Training doing of entrepreneurs. it? Of course, you just mandate them. You just mandate them. You just you do something to increase Who the mandate? Budget. The executive or of the legislature? Of course, the executive will do that by providing for an extra in the budget for education. For example, at the OAU, we have an, a department on entrepreneurship training. Data for ABU. Data for the Lagos State University. And you can do that at any rate. When you be begin to talk of solar light or providing for uh, uh, rechargeable lamps, it's, it's very laughable. When you are, pro when you are cutting budget for Mambila, pro two, uh, Mambila um, Power Project and Edwin Tama Station, I mean, you, you, you don't appropriate and appropriate at the same time. <laughs> it doesn't you know, work. They, it's they very have, laughable. The exercise talked about uh, this in context of zonal intervention projects. Zona intervention project, that's you go, political. You, you can call it constituency project, if you will. Yeah, okay. Well, they're politicians, so yes. uh, they it's have to play politics. And so sometimes, you know, shouldn't we also ask, how did that concept even come in, in the first place? The concept, because, mm -hmm. yes, okay, the concept came in because they thought that a part of the country was having more of certain projects. Is it the thought or that it was factual? Because that was, oh, okay, that's actually what was said by the representative of both the Senate president and that of the uh, House Speaker. And you note the Senate president is not in Nigeria, and, he did, and the Speaker of the House did not attend this signing. Their representatives actually confessed that it is to balance the political equation. Now, what the assumption in that instance is that when you are trying to, to balance, you are assuming that, you, because it is expenditure you are balancing. I would have wanted a situation in which they will also balance revenue. I mean, the, the revenue generation capacity in this country, is, is it balanced? There are certain things you provide for certain areas because they are critical. How do you balance that? You don't, can you balance it by, by, you don't balance revenue because a part of the country generates more revenue than the, another part of the country. And if the, the part was generating the, the more revenue now, never generated more revenue about 50 years ago.
So you don't you don't balance expenditure alone. Try to balance revenue too. That is to actually tell you that you cannot, or as a whole, wholesale balance expenditure at all times. What you do is that you look for critical expenditure, critical expenditure that will serve all Nigerians. For example, if you say Lagos by the expressway is in the western part of Nigeria, is it only the southwestern part Nigerians that travels Lagos by the expressway? The oh the second the, the second bridge on the Niger will be used only by the Igbo. You'll be used only by the southeast. Wait, when you talk about this, because it's, it's, these are just critical infrastructure that must just be built. It, it just brings my mind to the um, uh, the process that is we're still going through now, the amendment of the constitution, yes. and that part that has to do with autonomy of states. Thus, if that part of the constitution is amended and, and of course allowed to stay, do you think that it will impact on the kinds of projects, for instance, that states will have to go through for the benefit of their people? I would have the better option, uh, Gimba, would have been to adjust our attitude. We allow development to follow politics in Nigeria rather than politics following develop, following development. Mm. And in that instance, when it comes to constructing roads, it should never enter into our psychography that the road is for the way, northwest, not east, not central. I think it is. I think it's a, it's, 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 it's a regrettable argument that we talk about roads as being southwest road, northwest road. I mean, it's laughable. Except we are using geographical language. If it is about politics that this is going to be done in this zone and done in that zone, those critical infrastructures are used by all Nigerians, regardless of where they come from. But we have no. We are not agreed on that on those ones first. That's our problem. That is why a governor of a state, for example, will establish a state university and we want to distribute campuses of that university across the local government in that state vilifying and destroying the financial stability of his state. I mean, they turn university into rural amenity. Well, maybe we'll anchor the point where you say if they want to sort this out and avoid these arguments year on year, if they feel it's illegal, the executive should go to court. Yes, go to so court. We'll sort this out once and for all. But if that hasn't happened yet, this uh, part of the challenge This other question will continue. All right, Dr. Tunji Oguyemi is a senior lecturer at the Obafemi Awolowo University, Lefe, and also a budget historian. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you so much.